a welcome to our our study. Uh, our study is a very private place for. A he doesn't want to call it a holy place, but it's a place where he communes uh, with God and and with his with his subject matter. And we're delighted just to bring you right in, real close to us, that we might uh, enjoy together truth, living truth. Uh, Jesus Christ is truth, and uh, it's the truth that sets us free. It's truth that sets us free from all kinds of inhibitions and all kinds of fears and, and problems. And in our study, in this group of studies on angels, uh, we mean to bring to you a pertinent truth that has been neglected, sadly neglected in, th in the theology of our times, and for us to know that there are angels and that they do help us. You're going to enjoy today's lesson, so we want you to stay with us. Uh, Steve is going to bless us in song. Uh, before we go into our lesson today. And Steve, what are we going to sing about? The number that we'll be hearing today is called Whisper Jesus. And anytime we are in need, anytime that we are down, all we have to do is just whisper Jesus and he'll be there to lift us up. This song is called Whisper Jesus. <laughs> a name so sweet to whisper any time of day or night oh what a joy when we find communion no tongue can tell, no pen can write, whisper Jesus, I love you Jesus, heaven's peace will flood your Jesus, I love you, Jesus. Heaven's peace will flood your soul. Uh, thank you, Steve. Whisper Jesus is the greatest need among us today is to draw right real close to Jesus. I hope you're enjoying this uh, beautiful uh, group of lessons on angels, uh, the messengers of God and angels in the last days, because the angelic ministry is not over. <laughs> the, the, greatest, the greatest portion of the angelic ministry of all history is right in front of us. Uh, it began, of course, when, they, when the angels of heaven uh, exorcised Satan, his angels, and cast them forth out of heaven because of their rebellion. And they, they've had uh, clashes ever since, but the final clash will be during the Great Tribulation period. And so we are going to see more angelic activity in the immediate future than the world, our world, has ever known. We begin this series of lessons by uh, talking to you about the reality of angels. Now, we did that very specifically because there's some who said, well, uh, angels, that's child's talk, and angels, are th that's something that, uh, of a fantasy. And it is not. They are really persons called angels. Now, they are not, they do not have corporate bodies as you have because they're not human, uh, but they do have spiritual manifestations of their bodies, and they do appear as men at times and look exactly uh, like men. And so uh, their reality is for sure. But in, in our resurrected bodies, we will be like them. We will be similar. We will be similar to them in our resurrected bodies. Now, we then study the scope of angelology and, and showed that it began in the very beginning of time. Adam saw an angel. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, Abraham saw an angel. And, and all these great men down through right down to the time of Joseph and Mary, the, 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 the mother of Jesus, and, and, and Joseph, the, uh, the father of Jesus, the, the human father that sustained him. Um, they, they saw angels, you see. 
and, uh, and then right down through our times, there are so many stories of people seeing angels that, we, that we've read just recently, and we think it's very beautiful uh, what God has done uh, to preserve and to bless through this ministry, this particular ministry of angels. Then we, we, we spoke to you about what angels know, what angels do, and today's lesson says, why does God use angels anyway? <laughs> why does God use angels anyway? Uh, in Psalm 103 and verse 20, it says, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of our Lord. Uh, here are three ministries of angels. Uh, well, maybe four. Bless the Lord, uh, saying that, to, to, urging them to praise the Lord, his angels. And they excel in strength. They do his commandments. They hearken unto the voice of Jehovah. And so uh, they, they're, they're obedient, they obey. And so these are the ministries that angels, that angels have. Now, why does God use angels? Well, God created an orderly universe and uh, very highly uh, tr disciplined and trained and, and uh, everything is done by precision. That sun never deviates. The, the stars never deviate. They're right on schedule. God created a very orderly universe. And God not only created constellations, but God created creatures. Now, we here, I'm sure, do not know of all the creatures that God has made, and we will know in eternity so much more about them. And, and there are these creatures that we need to know more about, as such as angels. And uh, we must know why God uses angels in his divine economy, and especially in its relationship to you and to me. Number one is, we want him to. <laughs> we better keep that one real strong. Man desires, you know, to be like an angel. He desires strength like an angel. The, the, the angels are not inhibited the same as we are. Uh, we are inhibited by space. We can only be in one place at one time. Angels are not that way. And we are inhibited by energy. We, we want power that we don't have. And uh, we are inhibited by a lack of knowledge of things. And they, the Bible says that they know all the things that are taking place on the face of this earth. And we are inhibited by time. Uh, we, we only have three score and ten years on the face of the earth. And angels are timeless. They are eternal creatures, immortal creatures. And so man desires to be like these angels. Uh, and he, he, he manifests this. He wants angel strength, angel power, uh, angel uh, knowledge. But he wants it for very selfish reasons and purposes, mind you. Uh, he wants to show how strong he is, how great he is. But in history, man has always reached out to this. And even in folklore, like, like the story of Achilles, uh, his body w was immune to hurt except in one place on the heel. If he could ever protect his heel, you know, uh, then he was greater than other men. And he could overcome other men. He was stronger than other men. And, uh, and so man... Uh, is, you know, looking for strength beyond natural strength. And, uh, and then he's showing himself that, well, there's one spot. Yeah, and that one spot's not the heel. It happens to be the heart. But in many of the folklores of the world, like the story of Thor, it comes to us from the Scandinavian countries, the story of Atlas holding the world uh, upon, upon his shoulders and so forth. And even today, we don't have to go far back into history. Even today, films that deal with a third kind, The Exorcist, Number one and number two, and uh, the Hollywood's great money makers of our time, showing demon possession and so forth. And, and the Superman on your television set, the Superwoman on your television set, the biotic man, the biotic woman, the six million dollar man, then all the ghosts that you see on television today. And those, those demon creatures so big and so enormous uh, that are actually artificially made, as the older folks know, we wish the children knew that. All the ghosts. And uh, all of the outer space people and all of the erotic sex and the craze for the occult. Uh, this all shows us that man is trying to reach out beyond himself. That man wants to be like an angel. And, and he, he wants to communicate with angels. And, and, and so the purpose of God using angels is that man really wants it. He desires it. He desires it down on the inside of himself. Also, uh, 
God uses angels because uh, he, will, he, he will be using them in, in the resurrection. In the resurrection, man will be equal and even superior to angels, and uh, he will be equal to them in strength. Uh, he will be equal to them in intelligence. He will be equal to them in capacity of whatever God wants to be done, and uh, he, will, he will use them also in worship in the great central section of heaven that was lost by uh, by Lucifer and, and his angels. And so man will attain to that. So that desire that man has to be something greater than himself, like the $6 million man in all this business, that he will come to that. He will, the Bible says, we shall be as the angels in heaven. And so when we study, and that's a good reason to study angels, just go right through this whole Bible and say, whoo, we shall be like angels. Think of that angel that destroyed 185,000 enemy in one night by himself. And they were all armored men with swords and spears. And he, de he destroyed the whole lot in one night. Uh, and so uh, uh, man will have strength that he has dreamed of. And God, uh, and, and God will let him be so. And so in, in capacity and intelligence and in strength, man will attain to that of angels in God's time. Now, uh, why, why does God use angels? And why did God create angels uh, uh, for his use? And if you'll follow me real closely, we'll give you what I sincerely and deeply believe, and we hope that it will really help you. Number one, that they, God created them uh, to be his adorers, his adorers, that they will adore God, uh, that they are his worshipers, that they truly worship God. They, they very deeply uh, worship God, and that they are his praisers. Around the throne of God is the angels that are praising him night and day, crying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And so in the first instance, why does God use angels? Is for the one that he would have praise around his throne. So they are the praise persons of eternity around the throne. We're going to join them in that praise because we are the redeemed. And, you know, they can't sing our song. <laughs> they can't sing the song. They haven't been redeemed. When we sing we are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, they'll have to fold their wings and they'll have to bow their heads because they cannot sing that song. Only the redeemed of the Lord can sing it, but they will adore him as they have been doing. And so our first relationship uh, with, 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 with why God uses angels is that he needs them for uh, adore us, to adore him. And the second uh, reason uh, which... Uh, you may think is not necessary. Are, they are the protectors of the throne of God. They are the mil military and the militia of heaven, and they protect the throne of God. Satan might want to uh, come back against the throne of God, and uh, the angels of God are the protectors of that throne. They are the protectors of his dignity on the earth. Right here. They are the protectors of his work down here. They work to help keep things going the right way on the face of this earth in which we live today. So angels are the protectors of the throne of God. And in, in, in this matter, God uses them, and that's what he wants them for. And, and they are those that stand around his throne in his whole domain of heaven. Uh, they are the protectors. The third instance in which uh, why does God use angels is that they are his messengers that when God wanted Abraham to have a message, he sent an angel to convey that message. And when, when, when God wanted uh, Joshua to have a message, he sent an angel to convey that message. When God wanted the Virgin Mary to have a message, he sent an angel to convey that message to the Virgin Mary. When God wanted uh, Cornelius to have a message, then God sent an angel and conveyed that message to Cornelius, and then Cornelius conveyed it to Peter. And, and, and so you can see uh, that God... God has special assignments uh, for these messengers that speak to various people throughout the world and have done it generation after generation. They have spoken to lots of people, uh, generation through generation. And they are very faithful to God. They are very faithful to Him. When He speaks, they obey instantly. They obey perfectly. And so they obey uh, whatever command that He gives. So these are very uh, good uh, messengers, very faithful messengers unto the Lord. And then uh, God uh, uses angels because they are his informers. 
informers. Now, you, you read in, in Job 1 and 2, says the sons of God came and stood before God, and, and God says to them, says, how are things? And they says, well, uh, they're fine. God says, how is Job? And they informed God about Job. They told God all about Job, how, how he was getting along, how he was doing, and, and related to God the things that are Job, about Job. So we can believe that all through the Word of God and, and, and in our own lives today, that these are the ones that talk to God about us. They would be the ones that would, uh, that would talk to God about Abraham. Saying, Abraham, now, God, Abraham is very faithful. And Abraham brings up his family properly. And, and uh, we have been observing him, and we'd like for you to know that. And also, they would be the ones that would inform God about Sodom. They'd say, Lord, this thing's getting under hand, out of hand down there. They're getting so filthy morally. And, and so we think you ought to do something about it. And, and, and God said... We have heard that Sodom is so-and-so and have come down to check it out. He was checking out the information that the, the angels had brought unto him. And so uh, God uses the angels as his informers uh, that they might uh, tell him about certain conditions that are on, on the face of this earth. And the fifth thing uh, that, uh, that the angels are used for God more are his helpers. His helpers. Uh, when there was a danger of, of a sinful man getting to the tree of life and living forever, it was an angel that stood there and stopped him. An angel stood, the Bible says, with a sword in his hand and said, I'll let nobody get to this tree of life. And so they are God's helpers. Then you look all through the Bible and you will see how, how true that is. That they help to bring about the will of God, the purpose of God in human lives and also in nature or, 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 or whatever. The angels of God are God's helpers on the face of the earth, and we don't know where else. <laughs> uh, we will know when we get to heaven, but we are not sure at whatever realms, other realms that they may be serving in. Could be many. And so uh, they are the helpers of God uh, in, in helping him to carry out his will among, among human beings. And then we ought to say, of course, uh, with, verse, uh, with, with number six, that the angels become God's warriors. God's warriors, in that they fight his battles for him. When you look through the Bible on that score, it is certainly uh, tremendous that, they, that the angels of God are actually the warriors of God and that they help fight the battles. They help fight the battles of God. And uh, you, you, you saw when, when uh, they needed help in Israel and a great uh, soldier was standing there and, and, and Joshua Dome says, say, who are you? <laughs> he, he says, I am the captain of the, of the host of God. And, and so uh, God has captains over his host. And even when Jesus comes back again to, to, to destroy the Antichrist, it says he shall descend with his angels, and they will do the fighting for him. And, and what a beautiful thing. Not only are the angels of God, the warriors of God, they are his servants uh, to work for him. And whatever work that he needs to be done, they are to do it. They, they are to serve him as his servants, to, to serve God. And that is a, sometimes a very humble situation. But anything that would God that would need to be done, they would be willing uh, to be a servant of the Most High God. Why does God use angels? Well, they're willing to be used, and, and you and I are willing for them to be used, and you and I wanting to reach out from our servility of the human flesh and to reach beyond the normal uh, human strengths and powers, then they are our ideals. Strong as an angel. Fast as an angel. Uh, and, and so, and when they work on our behalves as, as, the, as the servants of God, how beautiful it is that we can be involved, involved with them. And the desire that you have in your heart to be stronger, uh, to live longer, and all, uh, it comes from God. And, uh, and in the world to come, uh, in that abundant life, you will live forever and forever. And we want you to be very uh, understanding of that. The eighth thing here that I see that why God uses angels is that the Bible says they are his intercessors. That they are his intercessors. The Bible says that, that they minister and that they are the 
uh, they are the ministering spirits of the heirs of salvation. And, and that these that minister uh, to us, who are the heirs of salvation, are intercessors for us uh, to help us in, in every way that they possibly can. And so we want to say we, we thank God uh, that he had these <coughs> beautiful persons called angels, that they can at least have these eight means, uh, these eight means of, uh, of helping us and, and, of, and of blessing us, that uh, they are, uh, God uses them because they are his worshipers, they are his adorers, they are his praisers. And then they are the protectors of the throne, they are the security guard of heaven, and then they are the messengers that take special assignments to you and to me and to others on the face of the earth. They are the informers. They said, God, I'd like to tell you about uh, Las Vegas, I hear. I'd like to tell you what's going on in New York City. I'm going to tell you what's going on down in Houston, Texas. Would you like to hear about Atlanta, Georgia? And, and so uh, they are the informers. Would you like to hear about this Mr. Jones and this Mrs. Smith? I want to tell you about them. <coughs> Being closely associated with our lives, they report to God concerning us. And then he uses them as his helpers. If there's a job to be done, he says, you do that, you do this. And they do it gladly and, and very beautifully. And then they are his warriors. When there's a fight to go through, then they get in and fight. Uh, and no matter how bloody it is, they step into it. And most of their fighting is still in the future. You know, angelic ministry is not over with. It's not a, a historical thing. Uh, it is in its beginnings, in its conception, the, the, the greatest manifestation of, of, of angel strength and power is during the great tribulation time. They're getting their swords all whetted up for it, I would believe. And then the, God uses them because they're his servants, and he uses them because they're his intercessors. And they inter intercede on behalf of, uh, of the, the ministering spirits of the heirs of salvation. And how glad we are that the angelic ministries belong to you, and they belong to me as the children of God. So that's why God uses angels. And uh, he uses angels uh, because he needs them in his great economy. And, <clears throat> and they, are, they, they are so, you know, so well able to say, listen, Lord, whatever you want done, we will do it. And they get the job done for him. And so that's the purpose of God using angels in his work. And so we say, thank you, God, for using your angels. Now, I'm going to minister to you, but I want to tell you that we have a very special lesson coming up uh, in our next lesson, which says, when angels intervene in human affairs. And I'm going to show you how angels have intervened in human affairs. And not from this those we have heard, but those that are backed up by the Word of God. And so we want you to, by all means, be sure and to, and to, and to receive our next lesson in our series on, on angels. May I bless you, please. Now, Lord... We bless our neighbor right now in Jesus' name. We pray that those that do not know you will come to know you right now. And that those uh, that are backed away from you and have backslid, we pray that you will bring them back to yourself and that you will do that right now. We believe that you will wonderfully and dramatically do things for these that have faith in God. Bless them right now. If you're not sure of the Lord as your Savior, then what we'd like for you to do is to look up and say, listen, Lord, forgive me my sins. He will forgive you of your sins right now, and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 and 9. Be sure to receive it from, from him right now. And then we'd be glad if you'd tell us about it. Share it. So often we receive good things, but we don't share it. We don't tell others about it. Please share it with us and let us know the good things that God has done for you, especially if you have found God during these teaching times by all means, communicate it to us and let us rejoice with you. And we would appreciate that. You that would like to have the, today's lesson by, by videotape, where you can play it on your own TV set in your own home, it is available to you to do that. It's especially interesting for groups uh, that would be coming in uh, to you, and you would certainly enjoy, uh, enjoy that very much. And uh, we have it on audio tape to where you can uh, play it anytime in bed at night to a group of friends or while you're traveling. It is so convenient. The very words that you have heard, you can get on audio tape. And it's only $4. If you send $4 to Lester Sumrall, uh, Post Office Box 12, South Bend, Indiana, and uh, zip code 46624, we'll see that you receive the tape of, of this lesson 
uh, that you received today. And we do want you to receive it. Then we have a teaching syllabus uh, that you can receive that will have all 15 lessons in it with my notes that I have used. And you can, you can also purchase this. If you're interested in and, uh, continuing your studies, increasing your studies, by all means, continuous learning. We want you to do that. Now let me hear from you and, and, and write the address down very carefully. And we trust that God will certainly bless you in a very particular and, and very sweet way. We want to thank you for being with us in our study here. It's always nice to see you and to have you. And we always say to you, God, wonderfully inspire you and bless you and lift you up in Him. And may the Word of God become clearer and plainer every day as you study it. And always remember this too, that when you feed your faith, you start your life.